Welcome to the Financial Freedom Podcast, where we interview remarkable people and share strategies for mastering money and living a meaningful life. With your host, Grant Sabatier, creator of Millennial Money and author of Financial Freedom, a proven path to all the money you will ever need. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Excited today to have none other than the personal finance rock star himself, Jay Money. Jay Money is the creator of BudgetsAreSexy.com, OG financial blogger, community creator, organizer, facilitator. Back when I started Millennial Money in 2015, I got an immense amount of value in not only reading Budgets Are Sexy and talking with Jay Money, but being a part of the Rockstar Finance community, which was a really, really special place 2015, 2016. And I've learned so much from this man. We're both at these life transition points. Motley Fool had acquired both of our websites, Uh, in the past couple of years and wanted to have him on the show to talk about really a kind of an awakening in his life uh, over the past couple of weeks and love chatting with people who are at a transition point. And this man is a deep thinker and I'm really excited to go deep today. Welcome to the show, Jay Money. Ah, thank you, sir. Feels good. Back in action. You know, I've been hiding. It's like I'm coming out party, coming out of retirement to do something. Who knows? Yeah, dude. Uh, tell us, you know, what, uh, you know, stealth mode has looked like uh, for you. You were the most visible person in the personal finance creator community for many, many years. What caused you to kind of go stealth and why are you reemerging at this moment? Yeah. So, you know, um, after all the years of being online and talking about myself and having fun and branding and all that, Uh, I kind of slowly realized there was um, a whole real world out there other than just the online world. Um, So I started like not working nights and weekends, paring down my hours during the day. Um, And eventually just made sense just to minimize more, kind of take a break, Um, you know, and a good offer came in and, you know, with Motley Fool, who you're familiar with, obviously, Um, you know, so it worked out and, and, you know, I was at peace with it. I still worked on the side, still did some curation over at All Star Money that we launched kind of another rock star finance-esque site, um, you know, and that kind of uh, shut down here recently. Um, and then I got sick, like out of nowhere, like this crazy disease started going in my mouth and my nose and my eyes and my throat. I was hospitalized two months ago and I went from like just living a chill life to all of a sudden like not being able to swallow, um, which is a really weird thing because you're so used to, you know, being able to do that. Um, and I was like, oh man, this is crazy. You know, so I was down and out for a couple of months and just recently got diagnosed, um, have a treatment plan going on. So I'm freaking like flying on the opposite side from like the lowest point of my life to like the most happiest, energetic, you know, I'm already a pretty positive guy, but now I'm like, all right, now it's time to like do this second chance at life. You know, let's have some fun. And so I'm kind of in that stage of like what to do. There's like a million, you know, shiny things. Um, It's been a crazy ride and, you know, and money too, like, Thank God, like we had saved, we have insurance, like that would have been a whole other thing to, to worry about, you know? So for the fire stuff, I know people are like, oh, too much money, or, you know, there's all this rage against that. But man, like it really comes in handy, especially with your health, because you, you know, your health, you just never know. It's crazy. Yeah, man, I'm happy to hear that you got a diagnosis and have a treatment plan and are now re- reinvigorated with, with all of this energy. Why do you find yourself kind of revisiting this old identity. And I know you mentioned perhaps buying budgets are sexy back. You know, how how do you explain going from, you know, finding peace with the sale and the acquisition to now being re-engaged and re-excited about diving back in to perhaps that version of yourself that that you thought you'd left behind? Yeah. You know, I think um, the thing that I've missed was the community like I missed the people and I realized the last few months especially being stuck in bed at home and then with the pandemic of course like if I'm not around people or engaging like I kind of shut down and I'm just and I don't really think I don't learn I'm not motivated um, and so while I was on I always kept my Twitter you know account at budgets are sexy and that was kind of like my lifeline to the online world when I sold everything um, but it wasn't enough like I want I want more I want to connect I want to get back out there and um you know, like build a community, have some fun again. 
Um, and so, yeah, the opportunity, you know, as you mentioned, the Molly Fools kind of done with, with their experiment with buying up blogs and, and that kind of good stuff. And so I'm in touch with them to perhaps bring budgets back. And, you know, and I think what I would do is I'd go back to the OG, you know, original blogging, you know, what blogging was meant to be, you know, um, 10, 15 years ago when I started it and there were some others out there too, we were just writing our, sh- our thoughts, sharing, like we made some money kind of accidentally, but it wasn't like build an empire take over the world, become an influencer, you know, like, like more, 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 more like business-like. Um, and I think over the years, I kind of got a little sucked into it. And then when I sold it, of course, which was a business decision, that's like, all right, like that was like wrapped it up. But now I'm like, what would, what would it be like to come back and just like be pure and raw and real and share your thoughts, share your, your, you know, your emotions, how life has changed over the years. Um, so just going back to like journaling, you know, that would be the plan, you know, maybe still make some money, but more so focused on like a side project versus like a gig that you're like focused on and trying to grow. Yeah. One of the things that I've tried to focus on the last, you know, three or four years is just trying to double down on my strengths and spend less time trying to fix and improve my weaknesses. I found it somewhat counterintuitive to invest all of this energy trying to get better at things that I'm naturally not that interested in and not that good at. And one of the things I recognized when it comes to community is I'm such an introvert that, you know, I, I kind of like being in my own head and going into my laboratory and creating things or you know, that's why I do love SEO so much. You know, I just love being in the numbers and the data where I really struggle with being proactive about reaching out and connecting people. And it's something that I've been trying to get better at and work work hard on. But as someone who seems to be so naturally good at building and facilitating community and you get so much meaning from it, and I'm saying this through the lens of I actually believe that community is currency and amidst increasingly uncertain times, community is becoming only more important and more valuable. How do you build a community and what advice would you give to someone who's naturally not very extroverted in how they can build their own communities as well? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I know for me, like I am naturally, you know, extroverted and, and I like being around people. But I think honestly, if it wasn't like having something that I was passionate about, like, you know, we happen to be about personal finance and then, you know, entrepreneurship. But there's pe- like every single person is passionate about something. Like someone the other day was telling me they're flipping Pokemon cards on eBay. And I'm like, that is like the last thing in my life that I care about. But they were like so passionate and they were telling me and they were so into it. I'm like, have you shared this online? Because there's obviously other people around there that that does this. I'm like, no, no, no one will really care. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, this is like so awesome, you know, and I don't even like Pokemon, you know, but like like that person to me seemed a little introverted um, and that person would be perfect to go on and share their stuff online, especially with all the different channels and all the all the visual ones, too. Like if you're passionate about something that's very visual like that, like a card. Um, so I think starting there, figuring out what you love and you, what you really care about, like that is always going to put you out 10 times farther than just doing something for money or just to do it to be famous or successful. Um, so figuring out that and building something around that is really good. Um, you know, the nice thing about the Internet, honestly, and you know this too, like no matter how shy you are, like you have all the time in the world to craft like an email or a tweet. You know, you could do any time wearing any clothes anywhere you are in the world. I mean, you don't have to be extroverted to send a message, you know, like you'll have to engage, but like you have like, you can do it at your own way, you know, and I know some people that will craft like a hundred messages and slowly release them into the world and then go away for a week. Like they have this way that works for them for whatever reason, Um, you know, but really connecting, especially with social, it's so easy just to respond and tell them people you like their stuff or, Hey, if you ever want to collaborate one day, Um, you know, just pinging people left and right, you know, it all takes time and energy. And of course, you know, if you're sincere about it, you know, that matters. Um, but I think, um, I think reaching out online is a lot easier these days and then picking what you're passionate about and focusing on that is, is the best bet. Um, you know, and then obviously com- all combined, you know, works out really well. So from the beginning of your blogging journey, you've been sharing your net worth and I know you stopped doing that and I saw in your recent newsletter, you're thinking about maybe getting back into that game pending the approval of, of your wife uh, and, and partner, but you've always had this level of transparency and openness and vulnerability. I'd love to get your thoughts on 
what financial freedom means to you and how it's changed in recent years because you became, you know, millionaire status, you got a lot of freedom in your life, you can wake up and do whatever you want with your time, but now you're choosing to spend your time differently than you have the past couple of years. So how how has your vision of freedom changed? Yeah, you know, honestly, I think it's been the same. I think the whole thing is like waking up and just being able to work on whatever you want to work on, like career, family, life. Like that's, to me, the whole point of the money. Um, what I've realized is that sometimes you want to work on, you know, an internet project. You know, sometimes I just want to go and go to a museum in my local town and like talk to like historians all day. You know, others, I'm just playing, you know, cards with my kids or playing video games or something. Um, so what I realize is like, you know, and for me, I think over the years, I found out the perfect um, kind of template. Like I want to work four hours in the morning towards a passion project, you know, when I wake up, um, which is usually around 5 a.m. for a few hours. And it could be a blog. It could be a podcast, getting on the show with you um, like that. If I have that four hours a day, that gives me enough like like energy and productivity and using my creativeness the best way. And then after that is like, you know you know, freedom time to be family or, or walk around town and that kind of stuff. So that to me is like my perfect ideal world, you know, and over the years I've gone close to it. And then, you know, you get sucked into business and you're working 60, 70 hours a week. You're like, ah, what's the point of, you know, freedom and money if you're just working 70 hours, you know, um, you know, and then you have kids and then that changes things, you know, and then you get tired of talking about yourself online like I did. And you're like, all right, I'm going to back up for a little bit. Uh, then you do want to talk about yourself. So, <laughs> you know, um, it's nice. It gives you flexibility to be able to do it. And that's the thing I think too, that we all forget is that life changes so fast. And like we, you know, we can never plan like anything, you know, X number of years into the future. So I think I'm done with the planning, especially getting sick. I'm just like, I just don't know what the hell is going to happen tomorrow. And so I think that's why like my, all my, like my chemicals in me and the the drug treatment in me, is all like jacking everything up. Like, look, you don't know what's happening. Make moves, like stop thinking, stop worrying, stop being, you know, like all these filters in your life. If it feels good and it does good in the world, like put it out there. Like it's not going to be perfect. You know, and you and I were talking earlier, like towards the end of blogging, I would write an article and I try and be as like real and authentic as possible. But then I'm like, oh, this like line feels wrong. I should edit it because I don't want to be too hardcore. Like, oh, I might offend this person. You know, oh, should I do this? And it was like double the time to get an article out versus just like keeping the original raw article. Um, and the rawness is what people relate to, right? The people and people and like the rawness of people is good. And then we have our bad sides too, right? And it makes our complete person. Um, and so rather than putting out this image towards the second half of my online career, of trying to like not do as many bad things. I'm kind of now like, screw it. Like it's me, you know, I have bad things. I'm working on it. You know, we all do. And people like the bad things. They like to comment and get you riled up, you know? So it does help like grow your stuff. Um, so I'm kind of going back to like making moves, being raw, making mistakes. I'm sure I'm going to get like some hate, you know? Um, but it feels good. It feels natural, which I think is good. So I want to dig into this idea of abandoning your systems. So it sounded like, you know, you were investing four hours a day on one project. I, I think you famously like don't check email after a certain time period. You know, I always from afar just viewed you as being kind of the perfect representation of balance. I actually envied it quite a bit just seeing how, Oh wow. Like, you know, he's able to shut this off and, do it on his own terms. And I'm saying that through the lens of, I really struggle with being able to say no to, you know, money making opportunities and profit maximization. You know, it's just so rooted in my nature from a place of scarcity, really. You know, even with the money that I have, I still feel like I'll never have enough deep down. I think it's just how I grew up and it's just, you know, something I have to work very, very hard at saying no to things. It seemed in watching you that that came quite effortlessly and that you were always keenly aware of the trade-off between time and money and maximization. And can you talk about, is that true? Am I categorizing that correctly? And um, 
can we talk a little bit about that? How, how, how you thought about that trade off? Yeah. So um, it's interesting that you, you, you feel that. And I think that that's cool because, um, you know, obviously I, l- I like to hear that. Um, no, I don't. I think it taken me a few years to kind of like I'm really slow at stuff. Um, and so like when I started blogging and it was taking off, I got sucked in and there was a point that I was working, you know, 60, 70 hours a week, you know, on a blog, um, you know, but it, and I had I was starting to have kids. Um, and I kind of realized about seven or eight years ago that like, that's not the path I wanted to be on, even if there was success and money in it. Um, and so it, it has been a process over the years of slowly implementing little tiny habits um, and then kind of like stacking them a little bit. And so I read this book called um, Essentialism by Greg McEwen, McEwen. Um, you know, and it's more like entrepreneurship kind of stuff, but like I took it very lifestyle wise. Um, and started trying to focus on like the essential. And I knew that like, you know, like the online world, right? Like you said, this is constant. There's always someone working, hustling, trying to partner with you all nonstop night, day, morning. Um, and so my first thing was like, let's see if I can cut out the weekends because the weekends, like, you know, Friday comes, like, I'll just do it tomorrow. Like this is never, never ending, you know? And so I did. Um, and so I'm good at like giving myself a goal and then sticking with it. I'm very stubborn. Um, and magically, like I realized come Friday, you don't get your stuff done. You got to wait till Monday and, you know, humans get stuff done, you know, when it's important to them. So I started getting stuff done by Friday weekend comes around and all of a sudden, like, um, like have all this free time. Right. And I would like read a book. I'd, I'd take a nap. Like I'd accidentally started taking naps and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot about naps. That's awesome. You know, um, my family kept saying that I was so attentive. I wasn't on my phone. Um, and the cool thing is in Monday would roll around and I was so excited to work because I had two days off and I was so antsy. I'm like, Oh my gosh, what's in my inbox? Like, you know, like hustle time, hustle time. And so all week was like more fun and a little bit more faster paced, but then come by the end of it, you know, you reset. Uh, so it was a forced resetting. So that helped for sure. Then I was like, well, let's cut nights out during the week. Right. And now we're down to this four or five hours a day in the morning thing. Um, but even so, like, so that's been, so yeah, I have some habits, like no nights, no weekends. Um, I started waking up at 5 a.m., which I really liked having the peace in the morning with no kids and like pure you alone time. Um, and then uh, some other things, but when, when I got out of the sickness or at least the, the bad part of it, um, two weeks ago, I decided just like, like, let's just blow up all the, the rules for a little bit. Like, cause these have been here for so many years and they work. Um, you know, but maybe some I don't need anymore, right? So I started doing social on the weekends, you know, Insta and Twitter and even Facebook. God, I haven't been on there for years. Um, and so like I'm interacting and I'm having fun. I'm in bed at midnight and I'm talking and like I'm already catching myself like, nope, this is like, <laughs> like a bad habit, you know? Um, it's fun, but it's just good to kind of reset. And so I'll probably start putting some of them back in place. Um, but it really is about like, what is your ideal lifestyle, you know, start taking little pieces away and you'll be surprised like what you could fit in and you're much more productive, you know, when you have these little tiny, I mean, they don't have to be like hardcore rules, you know, but even like a day off a week from hustling, like, you know, is crazy. Amazing. I love that. I love that so much. Thank you. Thank you for sharing, you know, podcast listeners will remember the episode with Vicki Robin, where she talked about how freedom only exists within limits and sounds like you're just the case example of setting limits in your life in order to ultimately have more freedom. Um, I might try that. I might actually step away from the work that I'm doing on the weekends just to make them feel a bit more like weekends. How much do you think that was driven by having kids? Is that just, you know, as a, as a hopeful soon to be parent, was it the kids that really just, made time sort of more valuable uh, in the sense that you had to prioritize and you started waking, waking up early or just h- how did that create that shift for you? Yeah. The kids, I would say it was a good 60, 70% of it. And it's honestly just me feeling bad, like looking at them, but my brain thinking about work or stuff I have to do, you know, and they could tell like I'm not there even though I'm physically there, you know? So I was always like, I just don't want to be a bad parent and I don't want to like waste this time. So that was a chunk of it. Um, and especially the 5 a.m. wake up stuff. I mean, a lot of people swear by that without kids, but to me that like from five to six or seven, it's like no one's awake in the house. It's dark. Like it's just pure bliss and you see the sunrise 
and it just like you like set the tone for the day rather than you know a crying baby waking you up and that's how you start your day um so that certainly played a role and then i just you know fell in love with it over the years um you know but another is too is lifestyle and i you know i i mean sometimes yeah i'll go for the money when i started blogging i was like i want to be a millionaire this is 2008 it would be cool. I'm going to be a millionaire, right? Because I thought you could spend a lot of money if you're a millionaire. You know, that's why everyone wants to be right. one, even though that's not the case. <laughs> right, you right. Um, I thought it was cool when I was tw- in my 20s and I was all flashy. And so I kind of started that route. And then over time, I realized, like, well, even if I was a millionaire, like, what does it actually mean for my lifestyle? Like, does anything change? Like, I feel yeah. better and, and confident. But I was like, I like, I know people that will just keep working and they're so successful. And you're probably in this boat too, right? You have millions, you have success, you have like a lot of stuff that people would just like, like die for just one of these things. Right. But then there's this drive in you that wants more and more and, you know, different for other reasons. But some people I see just keep going and I'll literally ask them like, Oh, like, are you there yet? Like, are you ready to take a break? Like, no, I need this. I need this. And I was like, well, when, when, when are you going to like, like stop or be happy? And they're like, I'm just going to keep going, you know, for, for my life. And they are, I think, genuinely happy to a degree. But it's just like it just hit me. Like, I will just keep going if I don't stop and, like, remember to, like, live more. Um, you know, and so I think having that secondarily, like, what do I want my 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 lifestyle to look like? Um, and this is not even for entrepreneurs, like, nine to fivers, like, anyone in the world. You know, like, I know, you know, it's it's hard to, like, set up your perfect ideal, like, schedule, but if you start thinking about like what it is you want to do, like I want to work Monday through Wednesday, you know, 40 hours and then I want the rest of the days off to go fishing or to do whatever, like knowing what it is and then working backwards and slowly like carving away, I think is really good. Um, you know, and it sounds so simple and easy. And of course, it's not, you know, but like the lot you don't need millions of dollars to like live your life differently on the daily, if that makes sense. Right. You do have choices of waking up and going to bed at different times you know, or switching jobs around or experimenting more on the side or connecting or partnering or asking for things more. You know, I think a lot of us don't ask for stuff we want for, you know, we don't want to look stupid or ridiculous or feel like, you know, we're getting handouts. But I think asking and telling the world, like, this is what I want. Like, you never know what comes of that or you meet the right person. Um, You know, I mean, we we had a charity project once where we wanted to, to give someone a car and we had about two weeks to find a way to get a car for this person. Um, and I remember thinking like, we were just setting ourselves up to be like big fat losers. We're just going to go ahead and just like say, Hey, we want a car. Like anyone give us money so we can go buy one, you know, and then it was going to fail and we're going to look stupid, you know? And we put it out there and I swear within three days, some random person on Twitter, Britt Rains is her name. She's still out there. Had a, had a a Ford Mustang convertible that she was looking to donate to a good cause because she, I forget the reason why she was doing it. And she reached out and she said, if you can find a way for me to donate this and like get the write off, like it's all yours. And I thought, holy hell, like what are the odds of that? And we, we partnered with the church. We picked it up in Florida. We drove it all the way to Louisiana with the top down. We met the church. Nice. The, we donated to the church and the church uh, titled it over to the family we were going to help in their local hometown. You know, all like within weeks. Isn't that crazy? And this it's was like amazing. 2010. Like my audience was so low. But like, had we not just put that out there, there's no way that would have happened, you know, and that's an extreme example. And I put stuff out there that like doesn't go anywhere, of course, you know, (laughs) but but like, but even if you're an average person, you don't have an online business, whatever, think of instead of money and freedom and maybe think about like what you want your day to look like when you wake up, you know, like just write the the perfect day and then see if there's things you can do because we can all sneak in at least half an hour, an hour of something that makes us happy you know, amongst the chaos. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I mean, money really does have diminishing returns. It's something that very few people will be honest with you about, especially as they're, you know, making more and more money. But I can certainly attest to that where once you have all the money you'll ever need and all the freedom you ever want, it's actually quite scary place to be because then you have to confront all the things and all the conversations and all the soul searching that you've been putting off. And so for me, it took uh, you know a number of years to recognize, Ooh, okay. I was just using money to ultimately mask for a lot of other things that I sought in my life. One of which was connection and meaning and create, you know, creativity. And, you know, there's so many different things that make us feel alive. And for me, the saving grace is really just creating content and being able to share. And I feel grateful being alive in this moment where sharing is so valued 
and openness is so valued. I can't imagine just hiding everything that I think, you know, just in my own head. I think I would go absolutely nuts. But talking about things that make you feel alive, I know you've recently hopped back on the skateboard. Can you tell us a little bit about that? How, how did you rediscover this passion? And tell us what it's like, you know, flipping tricks now in uh, your 40s. Oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, I was never a skateboarder, so that's what makes it even weirder for me. I'm 42 years old. Last year, my kids got into scootering, and we found, I didn't yeah. know there were skate parks around where I live, and we went to one, and they were scootering. And I'm like, well, I'm not just going to sit here and like watch you scooter, you know? Right. And so like I got on one of, and I brought one of their old skateboards and I was like, I'm just going to get on it and just, you know, play around. And you'd never I done it. You'd never. Like growing up, I did like maybe for a month or two, but like that's the extent. Yeah. Like I didn't do yeah, any tricks. Yeah. You know, I carried it around to make myself look cool in like high school, right? Like stupid right. stuff. Um, right. You know, and I got out there and I'm like, wow, this is cool. And so then like, they were like, well, let's keep coming back. So we'd go back a couple of times a week. And I'm like, well, I should go up a ramp or I should try and like hop over this thing, you know? And I, I didn't like, A, it's super good exercise, you know, but I had no idea and it is fun, but I had no idea of how young it would make me feel. And you're around, you're around little kids, but you're around mostly high schooler and 20 year olds who have all the time in the world, no cares. And they're just there hours grinding and playing and blaring music and smoking weed and all this stuff, right? And it's such a drastically different culture that I'm used to being around, especially as a parent. Um, and I was like, wow, there's this whole community. And then I watched them do something and I'm like, how do you do that? And they're open and they'll say, do this, do this, you know? Um, and so after a couple months, my kids are like, I'm over the skate park. Like we want to go do something else. And I'm like, well, I'm not. And so now sometimes we'll be at school for two hours. I'll go for two hours by myself and I'll just go, you know, and I get a lot of people like, oh, like, are you skating? You're an old man. You know, I'm like, hell yeah, I'm an old man. But I feel like just as young as you, you know. Um, and, and interestingly, too. Have you gotten better at it? Yeah. I, I Yeah. I can ollie over things. I could jump things. I could do cool. um, like where you twirl the, bur the, the, the skateboard under you. Um, I can go up, I can drop in on a really high ramp and not fall. Wow. Uh, my balance, my balance in life, like just physically is better. Cause you always have to be balancing on the board and you're always about to fall. So you have to learn how to fall or avoid it. So I fall like 10 times less. Um, I have broken my foot already. I've almost broken my wrist. So like there are like penalties that go along with it. But I'll tell you what, like, I'd rather break something. I'm like, yeah, I was out skateboarding and I, and I broke this. Didn't like, oh, I was just walking down the steps, you know, as an old man. And I, I fell, you know, <laughs> you know, and the, but the people, it's the people. Cause now I'll go, I'll go downtown and walk around and I see all these skaters going around and they give you a head nod and I'm friends with the local skate shop. And so like my network, and again, as someone who connects to people like expanded in a way different direction. And I, and I honestly feel like even the money stuff we learn in entrepreneurship Cause they'll be like, don't you have a nine to five? What are you doing out here with us? You know? And I'm like, no, I work online and you know, I got my money down and they're like, well, how did you do that? Like crypto, you know? And I'm like, no man. Like, and, and you know, then you go into it. So it's kind of like, I'm trying to like sneak, sneak lessons into them. Like, dude, that. you can skate a board for all your life. If you just get your money down now, you know? Um, you know, cause they think they just think in the nine to five, you know, mentality, um, you know? And so I love it's that cool. so it's, much. Yeah, I love that so much. Do you have some custom J Money board or like, are you like riding on a Benjamin oh, or gosh. something? <laughs> oh, dude, if someone will sponsor me, I will ride the crap out of the board. I will put pictures on all my new Instagram. Dude, send me, send me, dude, send me your address, your PO box. I will buy you a Benjamin <laughs> board. That is it. It's happening. Uh, I want to see you riding a Benjamin, man. No joke. Uh, to be a sponsored no skateboarder, I can see I'm a sponsored I'm not, skateboarder. Oh, absolutely, God, awesome. absolutely. You're gonna get a free board. <laughs> You're gonna get a free board out of this, man. Yes, yes. Just, I love yeah. you. So I don't much. know. I don't know anything about skate. I, I surf, and I, I don't mind surfing because you're falling in the water, and while it hurts, but the skateboarding thing, man, just falling, dude. But I can tell you one thing: my favorite Olympic event at last year's summer games was skateboarding. I don't know if you watched oh, any of that. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, is just, crazy. I was just in awe. I mean, I, I, I was like religiously glued to the TV. And my wife's like, what are you doing? I'm like watching skateboarding. She's like, what? I was just, it's just unbelievable. It is unbelievable. 
with those with those guys and gals and gals can do like the 12 year old like superstars it's like unbelievable so and that's the cool thing there are so many more women now especially with social media because of instagram instagram like every skater is on instagram like it's just so weird to me but they're always showing their stuff and their falls and and now like a lot of the women are into fashion and skateboarding so you got all these super big influencers that are doing both at the same time and making it like look cool for younger girls to, to join and so it really had in, in olympics yeah it just kind of helped blow it up a little bit you know, a lot more. And I think it's, it's a really open sport and it's interesting because it's only by yourself. You're not on a team. So it's like, you're totally going, you're totally competitive to yourself, but like it pushes you to do better. And it's mentally like, that's the thing. If I'm skating for two hours, I don't know what the hell is going on around me because I'm so focused on the board. And so I feel like mental acuity is really, really good. It helps you, you know. So just just two more questions. First off, whatever happened with all those amazing Jordan cards? Those Michael Jordan cards. Did you end up selling them? Did you net some profit there? Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. A couple of years ago, uh, yeah, because I'm a minimalist. So I'm always trying to get rid of more and more and more and challenge myself. And I had my basketball card collection growing up. Where at one point I was like, I'm collecting everything. I should collect one person and just like own it. So all I did was collect Michael Jordan because obviously he was the best back then. Um, And so I had like 300 cards and I had Beckett's and tough stuff and all these things that I collected of him. And someone, there was a, um, I should, I'll find it and message you what it is. There's a financial blogger who got into card collecting and has his own, has his own shop. Um, And I saw him talking about baseball cards and I said, Hey, look, I have this collection. Do you want to run a series? I will ship the whole thing to you. Can you value them, inventory them? And, and like sell them for me and you can write about it and it'll be a fun project. And he was like, yeah, dude, let's do it. Um, and so I did, I shipped it. And I think, um, I don't know, I think if I went to my local shop here, they would have given me like a hundred bucks for it. Right. Cause they're not worth as much as they used to. Some of those cards looked pretty valuable. Like some of those eighties, 80, 87, you got some like 87, 88 Fleer maybe. Yeah. Oh, they're worthless. They look like they should be though. Yeah, I know. Uh, and I had some others, like I had some Ken Griffey Jr. rookie cars, like one upper deck that apparently was worth like $100 now. But back then it was like $5, so I, I didn't know that. Um, and now with grading and everything, it changes everything. So you have like a little bend or a crease and like forget about it, you know. Um, but it was good. I, I shipped it to him and he was going to do this series and it was going to be like, hey, let's do it piecemeal. But then he's like, look, um, I'll just buy the whole collection from you and sell it on my own time kind of deal. Um, which is fine. I think I ended up getting 350 for it. Um, yeah. And I, it probably cost $50 to ship. So it was probably like $300. Um, but it was cool because I got them out of my house and I didn't want them anymore. And then I put the, th- I'm a coin collector. That's what I collect. And so I put the $300 in my coin collection fund. Um, so anytime a coin comes up, I'll just, you know, exchange it, you know, for that. Um, and for a minimalist, a coin is a lot easier to store than a box of, you know, cardboard. So I want to wrap it up around something that you put in your, I think it was your newsletter this morning, uh, which is titled more doing less thinking. One of the things that's been instrumental in my life was trying to drive based on my intuition as opposed to my mind. I feel like my mind just always gets me into trouble. And when I'm intuitive and I try to flow and do things that feel good and I know that we'll feel good and stay away from the things that feel bad or feel pressure. I tend to be a lot happier. Can you tell us what more doing, less thinking means to you in your life? And why did you title the newsletter that today? Um, so last week when I was at the skate park, I thought like I want to do more stuff and think less because I'm as I get older, I get more conservative, like I had mentioned earlier. Um, and I just... I've been getting stuck at like thinking, you know, like maybe I should do this project or that. And I overanalyze and I was like, I'm doing absolutely nothing right now by thinking like nothing, like nothing is happening in the world. What if I just commit and do it and put it out loud, even with budgets are sexy, right? I was like, I don't know. I hum and hawed for weeks. And then I was like, what if I just do it? Like, well, like at least I'm doing something, you know, and it does make me excited. And there is a lot of cool things about it, even though I could fail. Right. Um, and so I just started doing things and doing things. And then I was just like, I'm just going to tweet this out there. And I tweeted it and it did all right. But I just kept thinking like it's stuck in my head. And then I had some other opportunities and I would just say yes or no right away. Um, and I think for me, I, it's, 
I'd rather have like, like I don't want to have nothing to do during the day. I want to always have something to work on. So if I'm always swapping out these four hours with a, my own project, even someone else's project, like I put out a consultant call like, hey, like I have no project right now. Like absolutely nothing for the first time in 15 years online. If you've got a project you're passionate about, like let's talk about it. Maybe I'll work on yours because if you're passionate about it, it'd be cool to help you. You know, I don't care what it what it is you're doing. Um, and so I, you know, I have a cu- couple consulting calls like lined up for that. So there are other projects, but, but it's kind of like, again, just putting it out there and be like, what I want is I want to work on something I'm excited about and I just want to make moves. You know, I'd rather feel, I'd rather just like do it and then regret it later than just sit there and like think about it the whole time. Like it drives me crazy. And, and, and it's harder because as I get older and more responsible and a parent, it's like all these things are trying to like fight me to go against like the natural stuff, like you said, right? Like I know what the answer is naturally deep down when the first time I heard I can have budgets or sexy back, my first answer was like, hell yeah, let, let's go do this. It took me a month to like freaking talk to them about it. You know, like that's ridiculous, you know? Um, and so, and you're right. Like when you go with the flow and you know what it is, it's like <laughs> if you just go with it and I think just being natural is so, yeah, it's so good, you know, and, and I got some, you know, feedback from that, from that newsletter today, a lot of positive, but some people are like, oh, if you don't think, you know, like you got to think you can't just be doing stuff all the time, you know, like, like that's irresponsible, you know, but I think you get the gist of it. Like most of us overanalyze and take forever. Like just do something about it, you know? All right. So this is the real last question that I have to ask you as someone who curates and has curated for a living and, you know, knows more creators in this space, writers than probably anyone else, not to exclude anyone, but who are a couple of writers or creators that are really inspiring you right now? I think there was a writer that you recently shared some of their work on Twitter and just who are some people that are really kind of inspiring you that have gotten you to think recently that you'd love to share with the audience? Yeah, that is really good. Um, so, so I like a lot of the people that think and do like life experiments. So David Kane over at raptitude.com, N- nothing with money usually, but it's always like making you think about life in different ways. And he's always experimenting. Like he's experimenting now with like, what happens if I don't eat like three meals a day? Like how everyone tells you, can I eat different times and different amounts? You know, what if I don't eat one day and then eat three the next day? So he's always like challenging stuff. Um, I really like um, his stuff a lot. Uh, who else is out there? I like Financial Panther, who's always doing side hustles and, you know, into scootering and all this other kind of stuff. Um, a lot of minimalist blogs, Becoming Minimalist. Um, I like Joshua Becker, his stuff. And wasn't there some book, uh, was it Derek Sivers that you were sharing? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Derek Sivers is amazing. Yeah. So he has a, a portfolio of books. One's called like Hell Yes or No, which is like, if you have a decision, if it's not a hell yes, like say no, like don't waste your time and your energy. You know, um, and then he has some others like something like a hundred ways to live. Basically, like every two pages is like an extreme version to live. Like never go online. Here's why this is the best way to live. Always go online. This is why this is the best way to live. Never have kids. Have a million kids. Right. Never have like one home for more than a year. Have 10 homes in a year. Like they're all extreme. But like you can get a sense for each <laughs> each way of living. A how many different ways there are in this world is like crazy. But then it's like, you see yourself in some of these, you're like, what if I like just never go online for a year? What would that look like in my life? You know? So like all these people that just like, aren't like standard. Yeah. Derek Sivers is a good one. Um, I, it's just, and, and there's a lot of great, you know, finance, you know, bloggers too. 5am, 5am Joel.com. He's more, you know, daily positive kind of notes. And he wrote for budgets are sexy while I was away. Or I guess I still am away. Um, you know, he's, he's a good one that I like out there. Um, but curating is cool because you see a lot of new people in the space and the new bloggers are always the best because they're not trying to monetize usually. And they're not trying to like, like, they don't know what they're doing. They're just like sharing ideas and they're so excited and real. And I swear like sharing like a brand new article from a new blogger is so much fun because it's like, you just, it's just, they're just so into it. You know, and again, it goes back to like the passion and the rawness. You don't have to have most of our sites are ugly as hell. You know, like my blog, my blog still looks like it did from 2009. It looks ridiculous. 
you know? <laughs> it's not your blog yet. It's not your blog I know, yet. I know. Soon to be blog. I know. I'm going to jinx it. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's so crazy. Uh, I really hope that happens, dude. I hope that happens. I want to see you writing again. To learn more about J Money, check out jmoney.biz and on Twitter. At Budgets Are Sexy. Dude, great catching up. Let's not make it so long to do the next time. Hope you have a good rest of your day, a nice weekend, and I'm excited to continue this journey with you. All right, brother. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.